Hi, you're welcome to Organic Software Chem Clinic, where chemistry becomes crystal clear. In this episode of Inorganic Chemistry, we'll be talking about periodic table of elements and periodicity. So if you are just joining us, kindly click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more video updates. So in this class, I'm going to be talking about the periodic law and also I will consider the general overview of the periodic table in which I will classify elements into group, period, blocks, families, and type. According to Mendeleev periodic law, which states that physical and chemical properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic masses, that is, elements were arranged based on increasing atomic mass. But the major limitation of Mendeleev periodic table was that he arranged isotope of the same elements in different position in the periodic table since he considered the atomic masses of elements and it was also identified that the isotope of hydrogen that is the protium deuterium and tritium were arranged in different position not considering that the elements the isotope of the elements right here have the same atomic number so it was on the foundation of Mendeleev discovery that the modern periodic table was built so we can come up with what the modern periodic law modern periodic law states that properties of element that is physical and chemical properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic number or proton number that is elements are arranged in increasing order of the atomic number from left to right we can deduce from the modern periodic law that the number of electron in an atom is given by the atomic number and not by the atomic mass as predicted by the Mendeleev periodic law so the repetition of similar properties of elements placed in a group and separation by certain gap of atomic number is known as periodicity now let's consider the modern periodic table elements in the periodic table are classified into vertical column and horizontal rows in the periodic table we have 18 vertical columns called the group we have group 1 group 2 group 13 to 18 and also the periodic table contains seven horizontal rows called the period. But in this class, we are going to be considering just four out of the seven periods that we have in the periodic table. Period one, period two, period three, period four. These are horizontal rows called the period. The first period contains two elements that is hydrogen and helium. Why the second period of the periodic table contains eight elements, lithium to neon. Also, the third period contains eight elements as well. We have sodium to argon. The fourth period contains 18 elements, that is from potassium to krypton, including the what? the transition metals, the first transition metals. The period reflects the number of shell contained in an atom of an element. That is, element in period one contains just one shell. Element in period two will contain two shells. While element in period three contains three shells, the period tells the number of shells contained in an atom of an element. Like for example, we can consider the hydrogen and helium right there. They are found in the same period with just one shell because they are found in period one. Elements in period two, like the lithium towards neon, they contain two shells. Elements in period three, from sodium to argon right there contains three shells that is 
The period tells the number of shells. Why the group tells the number of electron in the outermost shell of an atom. Let's consider the groups that we have right here. Hydrogen down to potassium, they are found in the same group, which implies that elements in group one will have just one electron in its outermost shell. Elements in group two will contain just two electrons in their outermost shell, group three, three electrons, and also elements in group eight or zero contains eight electrons in the outermost shell. So the group tells the number of electrons in the outermost shell of an atom. The main group A of elements in the periodic table consists of eight groups, which are expressed in Roman numeral. That is, we have 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, 8A, okay? Which implies that the main group comprised of group 1, group 2, excluding the transition metals right here, we move to group 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the main group contains just 8 groups. On the basis of electronic configuration, elements are classified into four blocks that is the spdf block we have the spdf block on the basis of electronic configuration now this block contains certain number of groups of elements that is we have the respective number of group of elements right here the S block contains two groups. We have two groups in the S block. The group one and group two make up what? The S block. So we have the group one, A, and group two, A. That's for the S block. The P block contains six groups. We have six groups for the P block group 3 to group 8 so we have group 3 a to group 8 a for the p block in between group 2 a and 3 a we have the transition method which is found in the d block so the d block contains 10 groups so if we check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, the D block contains what? 10 group, which is found between. We have it between group 2A and group 3A. So the D block is found between group 2A and group 3A. A. Also, we have the F block elements, which comprises of 14 groups. The F block are found as a separate body below the main periodic table, which comprises of the period 6 and 7. The period 6 is the lanthanide series, while the period 7 is known as what? The actinide series. So, we have uh, the F block containing period 6 and 7 elements. The lanthanide is the period 6, while the actinide series is the period 7 elements. Moving on, we have the classification of elements into types. Elements in the periodic table can be classified as metals, non-metals, metalloid, noble gas, as well as hydrogen. Okay, so these are the five classification or the types of elements in the periodic table. Metals are electropositive elements which ionize by losing electron to form a positive charge ion. Metals which include 
group one a elements two a elements and group three a elements excluding boron so that implies that group one two and 13 elements are metals excluding boron so the metals are indicated with the red ink right here so all the elements in red ink are metals while the non-metals are elements with high electron affinity and ionize by gaining electron to form negatively charged ion the non-metals are represented in blue ink we have the carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine the phosphorus sulfur fluorine and the selenium there including boron they are what non-metals the metalloid also known as the semi-metals are elements that has both metallic and non-metallic character and they are represented by a dividing line that's cut across the boron right here the silicon and the germanium so the metalloids include the boron the silicon the germanium and the arsenic on this zigzag line of the periodic table so they serve as a boundary separating the metals on the side on the left, left hand side from the non-metals which we have on the right hand side of the periodic table the noble gas also known as rare gas or inert gases are found in group 18 or group 0 of the periodic table under standard condition they are odorless colorless monoatomic gases which has very low reactivity that is in some cases they are said to be unreactive gases the elements include helium neon argon and krypton they've attained their duplex or octet structure that is they've completed their outermost shell electrons so the next one we have hydrogen which is the lightest and the most abundant element in the universe its chemistry resembles that of group 1a elements found in the s block right here but you can see that the hydrogen is being separated from the main element in this group this is because hydrogen can also be found in group 7a or the group 17. so elements in group 17 they have one electron to complete the outermost shell the same thing with hydrogen it needs one electron to complete its duplex structure therefore it can be placed in group 17 also known as the group 7a of the main group therefore hydrogen is a non-metal okay so elements right here are metals but excluding what hydrogen because it can also be found in group seven of the periodic table as a, as a result of the fact that hydrogen needs one electron to complete its duplex structure an element that accepts electrons to their self are said to be what non-metals or i can equally say they are electronegative elements we can also classify elements into their respective family in the periodic table let us consider group one elements in group one they are known as the alkali metals that's their family name the alkali metals elements in group two they are known as alkaline earth metals the group three are named based on the first elements in that particular group so we have group 3 or 13 as the boron family group 4a elements as the carbon family group 5a elements nitrogen family oxygen family is the group 6a also known as the charcogen the group 7a elements are known as what halogen group okay and uh, group 8 element they are known as noble gas rare gas or so known as what inert gas in summary we've been able to classify elements into their respective group that is group 1 to 18 and also if we are considering the main group of the periodic table we have roman numeral 1a to roman numeral 8a for the main groups 
and also the periods of elements in the periodic table are the horizontal row so we have seven periods in the periodic table we have the first period comprising of hydrogen and helium and the sixth and seventh period are the lanthanide and the actinide series at the same time we've been able to group elements into their respective family we have for the group one the alkali metal group two alkaline earth metals we have the halogen and the group eight as the noble gas these elements are grouped into their respective block the group one and two are the s block the group three to eight are the what the p block comprising of six groups in between group two and group three we have the transition metals which is the d block elements then below the periodic table we have the f block which comprises of the lanthanide and the actinide series at the same time we've been able to classify elements into different types we have the metals non-metals metalloids the noble gas as well as hydrogen because hydrogen can be found in group one and group seven in the periodic table so it exhibits the behavior of elements in group one as well as that of what the group seven if you find this video lesson so interesting kindly click the subscribe button and share with your friends right now you can also follow and like my facebook page thanks for watching